Hey guys, I'm Emma Wilson, SCA volunteer and your guide to Virtually Wild Communities. So what we do for Virtually Wild Communities is we'll go out to a Houston location and talk to experts who know things about wildlife, who know things about gardens, who know things about everything really. And we'll bring it back to you so you can watch it from the comfort of your own home and stay COVID safe. Knowledge for everybody. This is our Eastern Screech Owl. He is super cute, super adorable, and the first question I frequently get is, is he a baby? And the answer is no, he's a full-grown adult. These are the most common type of owl that we have in the Houston area, and um, he came to us about four years ago. Um, he was found on the side of the road, and we suspect that he had been um, hit by a car, which is common with owls, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, he suffered a little bit of eye damage. You can't really see it when he's facing this way, but in his left eye, he has some problems so he doesn't have full vision. And obviously for a bird of prey and for an owl, having full vision is very important. He also suffered a little bit of wing damage, so he may not be able to fly 100%. Uh, owls are fascinating creatures. They live at night and live in the dark and they have to thrive. And so they have lots of adaptations to help them do that. And so common, the most commonly um, known adaptation people know is they have tremendous eyes. They can see in the dark where we can't. Um, and their eyesight is very, very, very powerful. They don't see color really well, but they see light and dark. Um, but their eyes are very powerful and they take up, the eyeballs themselves take up most of the space inside the skull of their heads. If human beings had eyes that were proportionally as large as owls, our eyeballs would be the size of softballs. So they are huge. And they take up so much space and they're not quite spherical or round shaped. So they don't move from side to side or up or down. So whereas you and I can hold our head steady and move our finger and have our eyeballs follow that finger, they can't do that. Where his beak is pointing is what he's looking at. They've adapted, however, so that because they can't move their eyes from side to side, they are actually able to turn their heads further around on their necks than most other animals. They have twice as many um, vertebrae in their necks as humans, and they can turn their heads almost all the way around, three quarters of the way around. And this is lots of practice for him being used to my hand and not biting me. So that's a you know part of our um, adaptation for being an ambassador. Um, so another adaptation these guys have for surviving um, in the dark is they have incredible hearing. And they're able to hear things um, that you and I can't hear. And this is um, done in a couple of different ways. Um, first of all, the shape of their face, the feathers in their face, the small beak, channel more sound waves over their ears. And then their ears are asymmetrically located on their heads. Now what you see up here, these two things right here, look like ears or look like horns, but they're not. They're just feather tufts. They just go down. His ears are flat against his head, and his right ear is a little bit higher up and pointed slightly upward, whereas his left ear is a little bit lower and pointed down. And these asymmetrically placed ears allow him to distinguish sounds from above and below, as well as from the left and from the right. And then these guys, their final adaptation that we'll talk about is they have silent flight. So once they've heard something and seen it and they want to swoop down on it, they're able to do so in silence. And so their um, wings, feathers on their wings are um, sort of serrated so that it cuts through the air as opposed to beating the air, which means that they don't make any noise when they flap their wings. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and share this video with everybody you know because we want to spread the world about the wild things you can find in your own backyard. If your curiosity has not been stated yet, don't forget to check our description for 
book descriptions. We have a partnership with Houston Public Library and they can get you even more books on this topic and also for, to visit our website at hereinhouston.org. Thank you guys. Bye.